So in today's video or in today's session, what we'll be going through is how the BOC cut rates by 25 basis point. We'll look at what happened under the US CAD, the JOLTS jobs openings, we'll break that down. And with the ADP non-farm to be released today, we'll look into that and any possible trade setups. But first, Okay, we are back. Let me do that a little bit. There we go. Okay, I hope you're doing well. I hope you all are trading well. Um, yeah, okay. Um, hey, like I said, hey Diana, hey Jimmy, hey Lin Lee, hey Spiros, long time no see. Hope you're doing fantastic. Hey Sam Pizzo, good to have you with us. Welcome to the session. Again, if you are new to the session, do drop a message and say hi. Let me know where you're joining us from. And for all the regulars, a big welcome back. Thank you again for joining me on this daily market analysis. Right. If you have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to put it into the chat and let me know. And you can help me out massively by remembering to click on that like and subscribe button. And also, one more thing is that you should join my mailing list. The link is in the description below. I do have awesome things to send out to you from time to time. Uh, thanks for that, Diana. You know, the funny thing is, I've heard that soundtrack once, and whenever I'm playing it, I don't actually hear it, so I've totally forgotten what it is. Uh, but I'm glad that you like it. All right, I'm glad that you guys like it. Um, any feedback, any comments with how we run the session, do put into the chat and let me know. Leave a comment as well. Let me know. Um, I'm always trying to make sure that this gets better and more helpful for you all. Okay. Um, what am I going to do now? Okay. So first off, last night, last night, as expected, as expected, we saw the BOC, the Bank of Canada, cut rates by 25 basis points, taking it down from a 4.5% to a 4.25%, pretty much as expected, right? As expected there. Um, what we did see on the US CAD was, well, I was expecting it to push up. Oops. I was expecting it to push up a little bit more to test that resistance before coming back down. So I was expecting that downward push on the US CAD. It didn't go as high, well, it didn't go any higher. Then I ex like I expected, it set along that 1.3560 level and then on release of the news pushed to the downside, All right? Pushed to the downside. We had a small blip up and then a push to the downside on the US CAD driven down by that push to the downside on the dollar index. So why did the dollar index push lower right why did the dollar index push lower it's really because of the jolts jobs open i have to say jolts and shake my head i have no idea why jolts jobs openings um, it was 8.18 million got revised down to a 7.91 million when it was 8.18 they were expecting it to go to 8.09 so when it went revised down to 7.91 um, it got released at 7.69. So a similar drop, um, a similar slowdown in the jobs openings in the US, which if you look at the headlines, it also says that um, America has the fewest jobs openings since January 2021, right? Not very good news. Not very good news here because when businesses right when businesses are not hiring that means that or it's likely to mean that they have a relatively negative view of how the economy is likely to perform right because you don't hire for the 
No, you don't typically hire for the short term. You want to hire or businesses want to hire for the long term. Um, they hire when they expect that activity is going to increase. They expect when profits or um, sales are going to increase. So when you have low or record low job opening numbers, it signals that they anticipate economic activity to be slower. They anticipate that maybe consumer spending and all that might slow down as well, right? That's why we see the JLTS jobs openings down to a 7.67 million. So not very good news. And because of that not very good news, we saw the dollar index push very strongly to the downside, finally breaking that 101.50 level to push down. It didn't go as low as 101.15. It got to 101.23, bounced back up, and then looked like it was trying to push back down again. All right? So it didn't, it only just came to that point, 101.20, um, an hour ago. Still anticipating the downside, but we'll talk more about that shortly. That was what happened with, the, with last night, the BOC rate cut, 25 basis points to 4.25%. The JLTS jobs openings down to 7.67 million. Not very good news. Then through today, through to today, we had Governor Bullock speaking for the RBA, um, casting again not very good news that the RBA, well, there were headliners that the RBA will struggle with jobs goals if CPI stays high, Bullock says. So CPI inflation data for the RBA not exactly won that fight yet, right? Haven't won that fight yet. So um, that was the headliner from that news. Nothing much all the way through today until tonight at 8.15 p.m. GMT plus 8, where we have the ADP non-farm employment change to be released. I say this every month. Remember, ADP non-farm is a private calculate. It's a private um, data calculation of the <laughs> of the uh, non-farm employment change number. The official government number comes out on Friday. Is there a correlation between the two? A little bit, but not entirely. I have gone through a lot, a lot, a lot of data based on my capacity. I haven't found any direct correlation but when you think about it GOLTS last night wasn't great right it's the lowest since January 2021 with job openings now looking at this non-farm employment change number 122k previously expected 144 it looks like it's not gonna happen it could it could very well happen but it looks like it's not gonna happen um, because if you don't have that much jobs openings, if you've got record low job openings, how are you going to get good employment change numbers? Right? So I'm possibly thinking that we might see a weaker number here. All right? It was 155 in July. Well, it was 155 before. Um, expected 147, came out 122. Right, so now at 122, expecting 144, I'm thinking maybe even, and this would be terrible. This would be terrible, but I'm thinking even the low 100s. Right, that 107 kind of number. About, about there. It's an absolutely a guess. This is absolutely a guess, but I'm thinking that it could be a lower number which might bring about further downside on the dollar index to push it lower, okay? So that's what I'm looking at on the non ADP non-farm tonight. Uh, we have employment claims to be released as well at 8.30 p.m. GMT plus 8, 231K, 231K, it's a weekly number after the ADP non-farm with the US non-farm to be released tomorrow. I don't think it's, this is gonna do too much Overall, we're just looking at this news to give us a little bit of hint to see what could happen on the dollar index. Fair enough. Um, any questions, put into the chat. Let me know. 
And then we'll talk about this tomorrow, or the non-farm and uh, Canadian numbers tomorrow as well. Okay, so that's with the news for today. With that, it looks like we're going to see a lot more volatility. We're going to see a lot more activity onto the dollar index in the lead up to this news. So now looking at the dollar index. All right, looking at the dollar index, you can see, I'll take that away. All right, you can see that firstly, it broke out of that range to the downside. Oh, well, firstly, um, hey, Angel Case, how are you doing? Hi, Ju Marinas, hope you're well. Um, I was laugh I was chuckling a little bit just then because I just saw Diana said, hallelujah, Euro pound broke that resistance. I saw that um, before I coming online. Hopefully, we'll get a good ride. We'll talk about that shortly. <laughs> okay. Um, and so now back to the dollar index. We're looking at it having pushed up. I would like to, although we have that point there, it pushed up last night. Oh, no, not last night. Tuesday went up to the high point here. Right. So we should have actually taken that and dragged this up a little bit. Okay, so that's one thing that I realized I didn't do from yesterday. Um, that's why you see that revision of that level still stays the same, that area. And once it broke that point, we saw a big push down. It didn't get to 101.15 because that by dragging it up a little bit to that high point there, you see that that 50% retracement is at 101.21, which it reacted to almost perfectly um, last night and again this afternoon afternoon for me early morning for you guys um, so let's take that away so we've seen that move down that pip retracement it broke that area it pushed down to that 50 percent level we can take that one away now with it pushing to the downside with the dollar index trading looking like it's trading Ooh, ah, what am i doing okay with the dollar index looking like it's pushing to the downside remember again adp non-farm my guess is that we're going to see a weaker number with a weaker number we're going to see a weaker dollar index so i'm looking for this firstly to break below 101.20 if it does that, it could trade down to that 61.8, which is nicely at 101.05. But I like it to the round, almost to the round number here at 101 or even down to 101.90. All right, there, about there, 101.92. Um, so that's what I'm looking at is basically it needs to all right on the 5th today of september dollar index breaking lower um we've had that downside already now it is i want to say consolidating but it's not really consolidating not really consolidating it's currently at 101.25 needs to break 50% level to trade down to 100.90 right and there's ADP pending there we go right so it's sitting there it needs to break this level and if it does break that level we could see it trade down to 100.90 that previous swing level there okay so relatively straightforward here on the dollar index i want to check this i want to revise this to that point okay there we go don't need that take that away that big push down bounce test bounce tested trend line pushing back lower needs to break 50 
to trade down to 100.90 makes sense beyond this then obviously we can see that push lower again with the big support at 100.55 okay so that's what we're looking at 100.90 would be just just there right which is an overlap of this point and this point here and that's why i'll be targeting that level if it breaks it could bounce from here um if it does i, I don't think it's highly likely to bounce but if it does bounce then we're looking that it needs to stay below 101.40 right but we're still looking for it to push down <coughs> okay um any questions if not then we'll look at the kiwi dollar All right so now looking at the kiwi dollar and a lot of it's going to stay the same those who that those that did not trigger you know um you see that pushing that trend line it's broken take that away kiwi dollar bounce back up but showing a little bit more of a downside you can see that it's trying to push back up i i'm not entirely convinced still about that downward no about that upward possible upward on the kiwi right um, i know i'm messing around my chart a little bit just hang on that that i don't need i don't need that level that's just too much All right so we still want to see it push down there is that chance of a like that break that neckline to push up um and again with that with a possible push up as well um but i'm thinking that the kiwi dollar would be there so we'll still be looking at one six one six five stop loss 20 mm. take profit will be 30 i think it's just there i don't see it pushing down okay no let's do that okay this is how i would plan it i would be looking for the kiwi to do this if i'm entirely wrong about um, if I'm entirely wrong about the ADP non-farm number, then we, you know, we see a slightly stronger number. We might, if we see the dollar find a little bit of a base here and push back up, if the Kiwi weakens significantly, then we could see this push down. So I'll keep it there at one six one six five twenty to sixty to the downside. All right, six one six five twenty to sixty to the downside. Um, this is if. We see a DXY recovery. We'll look to sell the Kiwi down. Okay. Um, then onto the Aussie dollar. Same thing. You look at it. Dollar is not really doing too much, but Kiwi pushing down, Aussie pushing down. I don't like that push up. And also remember that we just had headlines from the governor at RBA saying that um, employment numbers are not going to hit if they don't win the inflation fight. It's still talking about inflationary pressures. So it came, bounced, tested 38.2, rejected, looking like it's trying to push back down. Wouldn't do anything here. Look for it to react at that 50% level where it bounced from. It's right in the middle of there, so I wouldn't do anything. Um, I don't need that dotted line. Take that away. That all makes sense. All right? Yesterday, we said that Aussie, we were looking to buy. If it broke up, I think that there are a lot of opportunities to trade 
on the dollar um, weakness scenario. I think in a dollar strength scenario, there might be a bit less. So I think that Kiwi and Aussie, we might keep available for a possible dollar strength scenario. Um, 61.8, I don't like it there. I kind of prefer to look for this point as a level. Okay, so there we go. Um, hey, Stefan, how are you doing? Hey, Benjamin, good to have you with us. Hey, Noachuku, how are you doing? So on to the Aussie dollar, I'll be looking at 6685. Stop loss, very tight. I, I would say you can even do 15, right? And then a take profit at 45. So why I why I have why I'm quite happy to have a tight stop is because we've seen it test this almost equal low. We've seen it bounce back up to 38.2. I think that if it does push down, there is got a good be good momentum to break it to the downside. You can do it 15, you can do it at 20. Let's put it at 20 as my usual minimum number that I put in at. Okay. So we're looking at that 6685, 20 to 45 to the downside on the Aussie. Sell at 0 0.6685, stop loss 20, take profit 45. Again, this is if DXY recovery, which means strength. All right. Um, you see it finding a little bit of a base, a bit of a support there. Okay. Then onto the Aussie Kiwi. It hasn't done anything. It's just bouncing around. We were right. Uh, we were right here yesterday. Let me zoom in a bit. I just realized it's tiny. Uh, we were right here yesterday. Right as we were speaking yesterday. It pushed up a little bit, it came back down, it pushed up a little bit, it came back down, it's still sitting along there. I think that it'd be more worthwhile trying to find a reaction here at 1.08. So I wouldn't do anything here on the Aussie Kiwi. I'll be looking for reaction here. Okay, possible. What I mean by a reaction here is a possible bounce back up like that, then we can buy that back up. I think there'd be a better idea to trade that. You'd be looking for an idea like 1.0820, stop loss, 20 pips, take profit back up to about that point, about 40, 50 pips to the upside. Nothing now, look for it to bounce off that potential support level, mid level there. Okay, all good, all good. Let me know. Um, if it's all good, then we get to the pound dollar. We get into the exciting bits that we've been waiting for for the whole week. We look at the pound dollar, we look at the euro dollar, then we decide whether um, the euro pound is going to have a good move all the way up. Okay, um, and you see pound dollar again pushed up, almost got to that point. We said 1.3160, almost got to that point and then turned back down again. Still sitting along that resistance now turned, oops, now turned support level. Okay. That's what I was going to get to, Diana. Um, the interesting thing is that, and this is where those who are very big on technical analysis would say, hey, technical analysis is, uh, gives you the chance to front run um, the news because I'm looking at this and I'm, thinking that prices look like the way price is moving it looks like it's um forming up for some dollar strength right it looks like it's forming up for some dollar strength because it's failing to break a lot higher it's failing to break a lot higher it looks like it's forming up for some dollar strength so that's something to watch out for okay um, and also that's why, so do I believe that technical analysis front runs um, fundamentals or 
can give you a way to predict the news. I don't think so in particular, but I think it's all about scenario planning, right? So we're covering our scenarios. We're thinking of what could happen at different levels. So now, as you see the, do the pound dollar sitting along, so I hope I answered your question there, Diana. Um, but now we see the pound dollar sitting along this point, having tested 38.2 and it's coming back consolidating. We've already got two scenarios where on the Aussie and the Kiwi where if the dollar gains strength, we we'll look to sell it down. Now I'm thinking that on the pound dollar here, on the pound dollar here, we could see that push or consolidate along this point I still want to be thinking hmm. I it's very, I'm very undecided on the pound. There's no major news on the pound. That's why it's sitting right across. The dollar index is driving prices. It's trying to form a bit of a push now. So you're seeing the pound dollar push back down a little bit. We're looking at that point, right? And then if I took that and I looked at 50, it'd be down here. Take away 38.2 because it's right in the middle there. Look at 50. I'm actually thinking that if it breaks below 1.3080 then we're going to see that downside okay so there is this potential right on the pound dollar 1.3080 even stop loss you'll be about 25 pips your take profit will be down like the 100 pips to the 50% retracement level. That's the potential, but we could already be looking to sell the Aussie, sell the Kiwi down. I'm thinking that it might sit there and I actually prefer the idea that if it breaks back up. So if the dollar continues to weaken, you'd be looking at 1.3175 stop loss will be about 40, take profit, about 80 to the upside because there seems to be a potential big push lower. All right, so you have that two options there on the pound dollar as it sits along this area. Which one do I like more? We'll come back to that. We we'll look at the euro, we we'll look at the euro, and then we'll come back to the pound dollar. Because I want to see what happens on the euro. Hey, Ahmed, how are you doing? Um, Diana said pound on the daily time frame looks like more downside. It does. I do feel like it's a little bit more downside. But, you know, you look at why I want to look at the euro. Euro, a big proportion of the dollar index. You want to see what the euro could do. There is that big inverted head and shoulder that's taking a long time to play out. I didn't get into this. I've been super busy on my yen and my gold trades. Um, 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 so that inverted head and shoulder is taking a very long time to play out. 38.2 where it came up to and tested. So it's that point there. All right, so anyone go on to the euro, let me know on the inverted head and shoulder. Um, I'm looking at this. I kind of like, so th that's where I'm, I'm conflicted, right? So I kind of like the euro to the upside. Although there are no major, major news that could drive it up. Just looking at the way price is forming higher. The euro, I'm looking at above, if you can break above that 1.11 level, which is 
finding a little bit of resistance there. So you're looking at 1.1110. 1 Stop loss would be about 20 pips. Yeah, take profit. If it does break that point, we could actually see quite a good move back up towards that point at about 50 pips or more. Right? So that's what I'm looking at on the euro. And if the euro does push up, then we're going to see it's all at that deciding point. It's all at that point because you see how it's reacting to that 38.2, which also could, if you look at this, tell you that it's failing to break above that point. So we could see this push back down, which plays very nicely into how the dollar index is moving right now. Right, so you want to give it a little bit of time. I feel like it could just consolidate there. Right? There are a lot of when you start over analyzing and on the borderline of that is when you look at that push up and you see um and you see that triangle forming a little bit there, right? There seems like there could be a push. To the upside again like Ahmed is saying it might consolidate before going down um, the main thing now is we're trying to guess what the news is going to be it's going to bounce around here it's going to bounce in this area until the release of the news and it's a real guess on what the news could be okay so I would say that on the euro we can I would rather look for that upside and this is covering our basis here right 1.11 I'll go 1.110 no I'll go a little bit nearer 1.1105 stop loss 20 pips take profit back up you, you don't want it at 30 I'll go up to 55 to the upside so I'll cover my basis here where I would be thinking that if the dollar does push down, then we have the euro with that to the upside, All right? Breaking out of this triangle, big move up, break up to the upside, but it's going to consolidate in this area for the time being. So now with that, let's put that in first, 1.11052 to 55. Okay, so that, you know, whatever happens, we have kind of an opportunity. 1.1105, stop loss, 20, take profit, 50, 50 something, 55 to the upside. Okay. Then, because I'm looking at a possible push, if the dollar weakens, big push to the upside on the euro, then I'll look at the pound, dollar, and think that, okay, if I'm ready to be on the alternate scenario that the euro doesn't push up, yes, I can look to sell it down, but I'll also be looking to sell the pound down in this case. right? And you can look to sell it down firstly as it breaks, I think it'll be a little bit too early. Um, I would place, I would be looking for this point then at one point, let me just check something. 50, that's too reasonable. Okay, 1.3080, stop loss 25, take profit down to this point at 100. Okay, so that's what I'll look out for on the pound dollar. I'm looking to sell at 1.3080, stop loss 25, take profit 100 to the downside. This way you have it covered, right? Not because we're going to be um, flip-flopping and undecided, but it's a news coming out. We're going to see what happens with the data. 
data is going to drive prices in a particular direction for the medium, at least for the short to medium term. So depending on the news, we're going to see either we're going to sell, either we're going to sell the pound dollar down or buy the euro up. Okay, then with that, it might come down to if the pound pushes down, if or if the euro pushes up, then we might get that chance because pound coming down is going to drive the euro pound up. Euro going up is going to drive the euro pound up. So it tried. We were a little bit early um, anticipation that the euro pound was going to break out that range. It came back in a little bit. But it's moving pretty much as planned. It's set there. It's pushed down as we expected. It's just taking a little bit longer to push back up. I think that's going to continue. We're going to have to continue waiting on this. 8440, 20 pip stop, 60 pip take. I think that you could even be looking at a good 40 pip first and then possibly to the upside at 60. Okay. So I would say that you still have to wait on the euro pound. Yeah. Okay. Then with that, looking into the US yen, right? Looking into the US yen, this was a straightforward trade. Um, I got in early on this as well, just because I saw the trend on yen. I was happy to take the risk. Uh, we talked about this, oh wait, before that, take that away. So we talked about this yesterday where we traded it down to that 61.8. We talked about yesterday with it breaking 61.8 to that previous swing low. Um, I got in earlier at 144.80, all right? I think we... Um, no, I got in just at 61.8. So yeah, just a little bit earlier, 90, I think, or something there. Um, had a good 110, 115 to the downside. Had 115 to the downside on the US yen. So that was done. Easy trade to the downside as it broke that 61.8. We can take that away and that away as well. As it pushed lower down from this point. Then I drew that, right? Um, and I was thinking that, oh, no, wait. So before that, as it was breaking lower, that point this afternoon, I was in the Discord group saying that if it breaks lower, we could see it push down towards that low from the 5th of August, but what it did, it came, it did not push down. It came right before at 143. Dot, oh, couldn't break 143 and it's pushing back up now. Why is it pushing back up? Like we've all been seeing the dollar index pushing back up slightly, dragging the euro, the US yen up slightly as well. Now, the big question is that I actually want to see it push back, but I think it's a little bit too early. Um, you're looking at those that point first. So I had a question on Discord where, you know, is it time to buy the U US yen back up? Definitely not time to buy it back up yet. Um, sorry, it could retrace back up to this area. Right, I'm ready for the dot for the US yen to retrace back up to that 23.6, 38.2 area before potentially pushing back down again on dollar weakness. Okay, so I wouldn't be looking to sell there. I think that you all know my style is a little bit too early to sell there. I would still be looking to sell down from this point, 1.3420. If it does go up, push back down, good momentum. You have a 40 pip stop. You would have a 120 pip to the downside um, on the US yen. It looks a little bit overextended. 
this morning, as my trade closed out, I was looking at a potential bounce. All right, I was looking at a potential bounce. That's why I had my FIB levels there just then. I was thinking that if it broke, which level, if it broke through, would I be looking to buy back up? Um, I feel like it's overextended, but I feel like there is a little bit more downside before we see a push back up. All right, so that move is working. Yeah, so I want to see it. I wouldn't mind if it pushes back up now. You, I only look to buy it up maybe above 145. I will let it push. I want a bit more confirmation. I'm very, well, I like waiting. I like seeing what I what happens if I get into a trade. Um, or if it pushes down, then that would be a very good point to be looking to buy it back up as well. Okay, so long story short for now, I was looking at the retrace and then the push back down on the US yen. 14320, 40 to 120. And the US yen has been very good to me, so I'll look for that continuation. 143.20, uh, stop loss, a 40, take profit, uh, 120. All right, we've pretty much. I think if you go through our previous videos, we've pretty much traded the yen all the way down, traded the yen all the way back up, and then traded the yen all the way back down again. Almost, almost pinpoint. Right, um, Diana says we'll wait this candle to close. Yeah, it's, I don't think it's something to, across all the pairs we've talked about, I don't think it's at the point where you want to get into anything right now. Okay, um, then on to the Euro Yen. Again, it's pushed all the way down, climbing back up to that 23.6 level. Resistance, support turned resistance. Still far from that. Okay, we don't need uh, 38.2 but we want to consider that point there. Okay, so it's testing back up. Remember again on the Euro Yen, Yen pushing back up, dragging the Euro Yen back up. Euro dollar sitting pretty much steady. So Euro Yen now is pushing up because of the Yen. So same thing as the Yen, I would be looking for it to test within this area and then maybe continue back down. But the big question is what's the Euro gonna do as well? All right, what's the Euro gonna do as well? If you're look, since we're looking that the Euro could break to the upside, I think that as another view, right, of how the Euro Yen bounced off this area, what you could be looking at would be on the euro yen it might bounce around there i'll be considering i it's a bit higher risk i would say 160.55 you'd have a 40 pip stop you could have a 100 so oh, that's a big big move 160 pip move to the upside all right, so it pushes back, consolidates. You look for the breakout to the upside on the euro yen. If the euro dollar has that big push to the upside, that's going to drag this up. Okay, uh, for the euro pound, I think across all the pairs, I'm not rushing to any trades today. <clears throat> I've done my scalping on the yen down i've done my scalping on gold i think everything else is um, a wait for a moment now all right um, then onto the pound yen push down happened too late for me 
at midnight, it's, it broke down and pushed out. I didn't get into this. I know we were talking about this um, in a Discord group with Diana about the pound yen coming close. But it's just a bit too late for that. Missed out on a good 100 pip move to the downside. But what you'll see here is that it pushed down, found the support here. So let me just check this. Oh, that's all good. Right, that's a resistance area, yeah. So it pushed down, found a good support here, looking like it might push back up. And if you take this down, that point, 23.6, if you have that, I took away that dotted line, but if you look at that again, is that point there, right? So it's either the yen going to push back up or the pound, good dollar going to push back up. I feel like I, if I did this trade, right? If I got into this trade, it would be uh, something I would size down just to get into the trade, just because I want to get into the trade, but it's not something that I would be super happy to, super confident with because it's big move down, it's bouncing back up. I would be looking like, 190 above 190 so 190 just at that 38.2 190.20 stop loss i'll keep it like 50 take profit i'll go up to that 180 up first right just because i want to see that push then after that that upside but if not then i'm quite happy to let it move, I'll still be looking to see what the US yen does first. Then you look at the pound yen because look, we're looking at the pound dollar potentially pushing down. So that's gonna drag the pound yen down. So that's why I'm a little bit conflicted on the pound yen. Okay. And if it does break from that support, the next point will be down there which would be about that 61.8 level. So same thing with the pound. If it breaks up, you can look to buy it up. Um, if not, then we'll be looking at breaking down from that support 187.48. Stop loss tight, about 50 or 60 even. I don't think we're going to see 240 to the downside today. Okay. All right. Then on to the US Swiss franc. No big surprise, I'm not super keen on this. Still looking at it, pushing, right? It's pushed down, tested that 50% level, almost to that 61.8. I think that you can still maintain that view on dollar weakness drag it down so i'll keep that one uh eight four five zero twenty to forty to the downside eight four five zero twenty to forty to the downside we'll keep that i think what could happen on the us swiss franc is a little bit of push before a retrace if the dollar weakens i i don't like doing the analysis before this and um, the non I don't like doing it just before the non-farm news. It's just a guess. Um, it could change entirely, right? Non-farm, look at it. It could go from 220, 272 for no reason, 300 for no reason as well. So it's a bit of a guess. Just bear that in mind. You know, I can't stress it enough. Just bear that in mind. Um, US CAD didn't push up as we expected for turning back down but it did turn down so at this point here what you should be seeing is that it came down to that 38 in fact you would see that it bounced off that 50 it came right down and bounced off that 50 consolidating at this point what I would be anticipating here is a consolidation and then a break 
to the downside if that dollar continues to weaken. So you'll be looking at below 1.35, stop loss at 20, take profit at 55 to the downside. Okay. Um, 1.35, stop loss 20, take profit 55 to the downside. Yes, I can look at Aussie Cat, no worries. Okay, um, then, yeah, sitting there, it's gonna bounce around, look for the downward push. Then onto gold, this worked so nicely. This worked, I have to just sit back and, and admire what we did. So I, I, I did a very naughty thing where I um, was trading that down, so right after, this is, I, I like scalping, right? So right after I was telling you all that, you know, you could trade down to this um, 24, within this range, right? I could trade down to within this range. Let me take that away, leave it there for now. Right after our session, I saw it. I saw that one, two, three candles pushing down, coming towards the support. I was scalping this down to the downside. Right? I was scalping it down. And in fact, let me just check my um, level. Where was that level I was looking at? Um, in fact, I traded it all the way down to 2472. 73. No, 70, 7272. Right, 72, 72 there. Right, all the way. I'm scalping it down and then close out my trade. And the next moment it comes, and this was at like, just before the hour close, it pushed right back up. Right? It pushed right back up. So I was super happy I closed out my scalp. Super happy that it came down into this area and bounced right back up. I, caught, I didn't catch this move back up because I didn't think it was going to go all the way. Um, that one I was still watching. I did catch this move this afternoon as it traded higher. So now we had that question in Discord. What's going to happen on gold right now? Let's take that away if it's moved perfectly. Gold is sitting at that 61.8 level, right? Move down, bounce back up, sitting along that 61.8 level. Looking at the dollar, sitting there. If that pushes down, then we're going to see gold push back up. It does need to close above 2508 before it pushes up. I had a question was and on Discord was could it get up to 2520? Um, I think that it might retrace or consolidate, sit along here for a while. But yes, I am looking for that to break up above and push up to 25, 20, and maybe even 25, 27. Okay, so on gold, did my naughty thing. Um, now we're looking to at 61.8 now, if broken above, 25.08 could trade up to 25.20, right, to push up. If not, then it's just going to stay in this range. If it can't break this level, then it's going to stay within this range um, to form a better move. And I wouldn't rule that out as well. Okay, I would not rule that out as well in that move yeah it could just test and push back down again okay um with that then onto aussie cad aussie cad um we've done that no that was a long time ago that makes sense that still makes sense there 
Aussie dollar trying to push down, going to push the Aussie cat down, cat sitting across, Aussie cat sitting right there. I would look for it to break. In fact, let me just restart this. I definitely have that point there. I have that point there. And I have that point there. Right? So on Aussie CAD, what you will want to be looking out for would be a break to the downside. Aussie dollar looking like it might push down. It's still forming up. So I would say that, that if Aussie dollar does push down, you see Aussie CAD push down. CAD pushing, US CAD pushing down. Yes, could still see Aussie CAD push down. So don't do anything yet unless it breaks below 9060. Then I'll give it a bit more space actually. 9055. Then you go stop loss at the very most 15 to 20. Your take profit would be about 40 to the downside. That's what I'll be looking for. I think why I'm giving a bit more space is I think that it could push down that way or maybe even to a greater extent. Right? So that's what I'll be thinking of on the Aussie CAD. But yes, still thinking of the downside. I, I do, I agree with you. Looking at the downside potential on the Aussie CAD. Okay. So with all that said, please remember, trade well, trade safe. Any questions, put it into the chat or put it into the comments, put it into Discord. If you haven't already, join me, join my mailing list. Um, link is there again. Oops there again and then i will catch you all tomorrow for the pre non-farm analysis thank you so much diana thanks noah chuku thanks juma Reynas. thanks jimmy take care now you're bye bye